Thank you, Hello everyone, I'm Greg. We've got Blake, Jack and Luke. And we're going to talk to you about unschooling. So what do you guys think unschooling could be about? Yes, um, sorry. So a lot of homeschooling. Yeah, that's involved. So it's pretty much an idea where all these ideas here is related to unschooling. And what it is, so homeschooling, preschooling, hack schooling, possibly university could be a part of unschooling. So unschooling is where we've got this idea where students break away from the strict mainstream of traditional schools. Uh, it's where the students are set free and they're free to, um, <coughs> free to, to search for their own learning, which uh, the students become more open to learning um, and more engaged and more motivated. Um, so, just to give you more of an idea, we got this video to show you the differences between the two schools. Oh, school day! It's so early! I'm still tired. That must mean I need more sleep. Yeah, I'll go back to sleep. Gazza, what's up? Shazza, how you doing? Boy, that's my girl. Just talk. Do we talk to her again? Boy. Hi, friends. Okay, class, get ready for some learning. We're going to be doing some maths, uh, some English, some Chinese, some home economics. Get your books out. Hmm. What to learn about today? Test? Next week. environment are usually uh, disengaged and not motivated. So what we're trying to achieve is to implement this idea of free schooling within the classrooms to get students motivated and to learn. Oops. <laughs> oh, that's, oh, going back to the karaoke, this is karaoke. <laughs> so what we're going to do, we're going to get you to Join in this exercise where you've got to choose what you, what do you think so far? Do you, would you go with traditional schooling or unschooling? So, get up, stand up. Yeah. So, over this side of the room, do you want to go with unschooling? Okay, so, yeah, so why would you choose after school? Because the child looked a lot more happy and mental well-being is really important. Well-being, mental well-being, that's pretty good. You guys, who wants to volunteer? Why traditional schooling? Are they even learning? Like, were they even doing anything? Were they doing any schooling? You learn to play games. <laughs> there, there you go. Also, when you get older and you have a job, you can't just decide I'm tired and I'm going to stay in bed. Mm. So some fair points there. Okay, that's good. That's it. Well, you guys can just keep standing now. Just no, no, no. You can sit down. <laughs> Thanks for that. Okay. So um, now we 
look at some specific negatives of unschooling and um, discuss a few around there. So, uh, this one. Um, so firstly, um, the students don't get the opportunity to engage and communicate with other people socially. So um, there are negative effects that come along with that. And that's especially around the ones that are homeschool because as we said, unschooling can be free schooling within a school, but the ones that are homeschooled don't get that opportunity to talk to other um, peers and communicate with each other. And that can be very um, detrimental towards when they're looking for jobs, when they're looking for a career. They might not know how to speak to someone. They might not know how to communicate in the ways that we learn growing up through our school environment. Um, another negative of unschooling would be the assessment. There is no set grading system. so. The kids will go, they'll do what they want, and um, parents, if they're being homeschooled, won't be able to gauge where their students, are, where their kids are at, because they might be doing really well excelling in English, but they might be lacking in maths because they're putting that extra time into English, but they're not doing all their um, maths work at the same time, so they're falling behind in other areas, and the parents can't gauge that whilst they're at school. Um, another negative associated is there's no support system present, so. Um, with schools, you've got counsellors, you've got teachers, you've got people you can go and talk to, you can communicate with, and um, un unschooled, homeschooled students that are um, at home, if they haven't got that good relationship with their parents, because they might not, and it gives it, it's hard for them to express their feelings because they haven't got anyone they can go to, they can talk to, um, and make sure that they can get through their problems and whatnot. And finally, another negative would be, um, there's not always resources that are readily available, uh, especially with homeschooling. Most of the time, the students won't have textbooks, they won't have um, libraries and books that they can go to. They're only relying on the internet. So their opinion and their um, assessment work will be very skewed towards what they find on the internet, not necessarily um, relevant information as well. So I'll also chime in there as well, just with a few more negatives. So. We've all had bad teachers over our years at school, I think we'd agree, but they're following a curriculum. Imagine if you have a bad teacher who's doing this free schooling, uh, unschooling idea, where it's just, that'd be absolute chaos. So your teacher, at least they've got, you've got something to do, you know what you're expected of is what's expected of you. Whereas if you're being unschooled, and it's all up to you sort of thing, if it's not facilitated properly, it's gonna go bad really quickly. So, <coughs> Um, yeah, keeping class on task can be very difficult. If you don't find something that your student's interested in, uh, they've got nothing to study. The other thing is that with traditional schooling, you get an idea of how much work's expected of you per week, whereas with free schooling and unschooling, it can be so slow to develop and you might not get much done during a week for the sake of students uh, learning what they want to learn. Did you want to start? Oh, no. Hey, sure. Yeah. Yeah. Are you sure? Yeah. Uh, okay. So um, we wanted to do both sides because we think, as a for a valid argument, obviously you need to hear both sides. So Greg and myself are on the positive side, and why we chose this um, was because unschooling, yeah, like Greg was saying, does not have to be uh, isolated homeschooling, which is what most people think of. So, um, and the thing is with uh, uns with, with unschooling, there's a quote next thing. Um, this is a perfect example. So, unschooling, a term coined by American author and educator, oh, it's got an author there wrong, John Carroll Holt, is a form of pedagogy where learning is based on the student's interests, needs, and goals. Unschooling has two philosophical contexts. The first associated with homeschooling, where traditional curriculum and pedagogy are executed in the home rather than in a school setting. The other, which succinctly summarizes my experience, refers to unschooling as self directed learning in the classroom within a school setting. And Birdwood High School is a perfect example of this. Next, next one. Um, did anyone go to Birdwood High School or has been or knows about Birdwood High School? So Birdwood High School applied the principles where they said we're not going to have the same structure. We're going to actually let the kids, you know, that help them by, through conversation, find out what they want to do, and then they have to incorporate all the lessons, so your maths, your English, and all that sort of thing, within to where they're going. So kind of big picture stuff. So this is a set out, a layout of how they sit. Uh, the bad behaviour went down 98%. They stopped their um, 
what do you call it, uh, timeout oh. rooms or anything. They just didn't even have to have it. The only fight they had in like a year or something apparently was like from Facebook uh, the night before or something like that that came over into the school. So um, one of the things that one of the students from Flinders asked, who gave you permission to do this? And the principal's response was, no one, no one. We just did it. And so far we haven't got in trouble. No one seems to be checking up on us. But they've got people from all around the world coming to see how they do it. It looks revolutionary, but it's actually going back to before the Industrial Revolution, which compartmentalised education and put subject areas into different you know, areas instead of learning holistically. And exactly what you said about um, having the students being happy. The, uh, so it's hard to find exact data, obviously, because there is support bases. They actually have a huge community where they all learn and pull from each other and work together. Heaps of academic sources on it. But what you have to break down is those preconceived ideas about things like uh, kids, well, as an example, who are homeschooled have low social skills. It's, uh, it's a preconceived idea. And if, if I could ask anyone if you know any evidence that would support that, or is that something you've just heard on the grapevine? If anyone has any, any yep, you got some? I played career with a few kids at home school and I'm pretty weird. Yeah. <laughs> so, no, 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 no that's good, that's, that's good. Uh, that's one, uh, it's, a, it's an experience he's had. I've met homeschool kids, not that we're talking just about homeschooling, who have been incre uh, more uh, social than, than students from school. And that being, is because their parents are very social. So we as educators, if we are social people, those who we educate and we help people to learn through social, then they're more likely to pick up those social skills. Can we move on to the next one? Um, so here's some of the other positives. Avoids obligation. Uh, how many people had, oh, how many here would be teaching if you knew that you were never going to get paid for it? <coughs> That was a world time cough. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so you've got one person who would teach even if they weren't getting paid for it. What that is, is that's called obligation. You're there because you're obligated. So when you're an employee, you're earning money. So you have employees who are teaching the young people how to get into a career. Does that make sense? So how unschooling works is they use people who aren't obligated, and so like business owners, that sort of thing, who aren't employees who then inspire the young people how to, do you know what I mean, because they want to become like them. Uh, learning's not a chore, uh, their time is spent exploring things, and they can actually fast track their learning. So you can meet kids who are in grade seven and they have university level knowledge of science and that sort of thing, especially if it's their interest. Uh, and obviously if you're doing it well, then you're gonna be incorporating maths and all the other things they need. Um, it's not restricted to classrooms, so learning is, is in the world. You can learn more from the world pretty much than anywhere else. Uh, and it is community orientated and lot, uh, life experiences of the greatest educators and the possibilities are endless. Now we've got a little quick video. How are we doing for time? Julian, going okay? Uh, so this is, hang on before we start. Pro okay. pro Professor Academia uh, is, so there's this 13 year old kid who was unschooled, but he calls it hack schooling. So he's got his own type of education. Mm -hmm. So we're only gonna show a little bit of it, um, unless we've got a bit more time. Just to show you guys as an example of someone, just the same way we've met weird kids at cricket, um, there are also other kids that do amazing things learning in this way. Education, I just don't get it. So I've been studying the science of being happy and healthy. It really comes down to practicing these eight things. Exercise, diet and nutrition, time in nature, contribution, service to others, relationships, recreation, relaxation and stress management, and religious or spiritual involvement. Yes, got that one. Um, so these eight things come from Dr. Roger Walsh. He calls them therapeutic lifestyle changes, or TLCs for short. Funny, I don't remember quoting academic sources at the age of 13. So who else do you learn from? Shane McConkey is my hero. I loved him because he was the world's best skier. But then one day I realized what I really loved about Shane. He was a hacker. Not a computer hacker. He hacked skiing. His creativity and inventions made skiing what it is today and why I love to ski. So that's why you're wearing the beanie. A lot of people think of hackers as geeky computer nerds who live in their parents' basement and spread computer viruses. But I don't see it that way. Hackers are innovators. 
Hackers are people who challenge and change the systems to make them work differently, to make them work better. It's just how they think. It's a mindset. But, but aren't we supposed to conform? This all sounds rather rebellious. I'm growing up in a world that needs more people with a hacker mindset. And not just for technology. Everything is up for being hacked. Even skiing. Even education. So whether it's Steve Jobs, Mark Zuckerberg, or Shane McConkie, having the hacker mindset can change the world. True. Healthy, happy, creativity, and the hacker mindset are all a large part of my education. I call it hack schooling. I don't use any one particular curriculum, and I'm not dedicated to any one particular approach. I hack my education. I take advantage of opportunities in my community and through a network of my friends and family. I take advantage of opportunities to experience what I'm learning, and I'm not afraid to look for shortcuts or hacks to get a better, faster result. You're telling me that you, a 13-year-old, have enough self-efficacy to develop your own education. You're also outward-focused on the community. It's like a remix or a mashup of learning. It's flexible, opportunistic, and it never loses sight of making happy, healthy, and creativity a priority. And here's the cool part, because it's a mindset, not a system. Hack schooling can be used by anyone, even traditional schools. Even traditional schools? Let's pause and think about that for a moment. Yeah. So there is heaps more there, but we won't have time, will we? Um, he explains all his diff different classes. He goes to like a business and he works for a business for a couple of days. Uh, and then he has other people in the community. And he mentions his friends a lot, which is interesting because don't homeschool kids have no friends and no social life. Um, so, and one of the big things about young people who are around older people, they seem like that they have less social skills, but only because they're not thrown into a shark pool of people their own age. So they end up actually having very mature, and so they, some may find it hard to relate with other younger students because they're also used to being uh, dominated by their peer groups instead of being in control of, do you know what I mean, becoming more adult-like. And that term teenager, as we've all learned here, has only been around for the last sort of few years. And a lot of cultures at 13 are considered an adult and they have those responsibilities. So if you give them responsibilities, they're going to live up to it. But the more responsibility you take from them, the less responsible they'll be. So, yeah, did you want to say anything to that? I don't know, pretty much some that. Do you want to put in this page? Uh, it's just if they want to yeah, so if, up. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, no, so if you guys want to yeah. stand up, stand again. up again. And if you, have, if you think there's some truth to that, then please stand on that side yeah. of the room again. Yep, true side again. Your soul, no. I, I was right the first time. Do you want to tell the jack? No, I'm you hear both sides of the argument, you're not going to be empowered because you're not going to know both you know, perspectives. At least start thinking about it for the next few years. So I'm a businessman, so when I used to work in schools, I was out of choice. And I came to university thinking, why can't I start something? So I didn't come thinking about getting a job as a teacher. I came thinking about, can I start an alternative form of education based on some of these principles? So that's kind of what I want to inspire people with is that if you get stuck in school and you're just like, this is just not working, what are some other avenues? And it might take 10 years. I don't even know for me where I'm going to be at with all this. But um, all I know is let's start some conversations. So how about someone in the middle? Who was someone in the middle? I was in the middle. Yeah, yeah. why did you, why I did you know, I just thought, like, I agree that, like, the really, like, stereotypical view of school being, like, sit down, shut up, do your work thing is not the best way to go. And, some self-responsibility like for the kids and stuff is fantastic, but I don't know if I would completely take away the school environment, because that's why I'm kind of like... Yeah, that's not what we're suggesting. We're mm. suggesting 
in the school environment. Because we're yeah. all Otherwise, we wouldn't be spending this amount of years and this much time. I mean, we yeah. want you guys to be professional teachers. But it's similar to Birdwood, it's adopting that within the already existing school setups. So, anyone else wanted to say that? Or challenge? Yeah? Is that across every year level in Birdwood? Uh, Birdwood at this point is only middle school because it was a huge changeover to do it. So, <coughs> 11 and 12, they don't do it. So, they do it from years like, 6 to 10. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But year 11 and 12, they go back to the traditional level. And all teachers are involved in this old school? Only in the middle school. Yeah, so how they do it is the teachers don't have a set classroom. They all walk around. Mm -hmm. So they're actually busier, but every conversation they have is completely worthwhile. They don't, and if they're going to teach a whole range of students, they'll say, I'm doing a talk for 10 minutes about this, if anyone wants to come, and then a whole week, they're not going to hold the students. So it's way more organic how, how they learn. The students are in charge for control of it. Can I ask another question? Yeah. Yeah. So does that mean you don't have a structure to your day? You don't have a timetable as such? Um, well, obviously, there's no set thing. It's you're in discussion with the students and parents. They have a lot of meetings with the parents as well, so they all chat together. Um, but yeah, if they, if they just want to go and have a break, they just go and have a break. They don't have a recess time or the same time or anything like that. So yeah, whenever someone's a bit tired, they can go and have a break. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so just in summary, we think it can be influenced very well, but you need to be really educated if you are the one to facilitate such a, um, a method, because like I said before, it can go bad really quickly. Um, so the Birdwood Middle School idea is a good example, and as Luke said, you get people from all over the world coming to have a look at it, so it seems must be working, but um, if it goes back to senior school after that, it's just ch constantly changing methods. So. It's kind of hard because it's very hard to assess uh, student effort and engagement, whereas traditional methods, you get the exam like across the whole board, everyone gets it. So it's obviously really hard to make such a huge change, but uh, unschooling can be effective if used properly. Thank you. If anyone wants to